chapter 37. No, we did not skip 36. 36 and 37 go together. All one story of the text this evening. Text this evening will be taken out of Isaiah chapter 37. Not going to keep you terribly long this evening. I understand it's been a holiday weekend. We're all worn out from uh, Christmas. I think there's only uh, 300 and, I don't know, 350 some odd days left till Christmas. So, and we'll do it all again. Uh, all of you Christmas fans. Uh, some of you moaning and groaning out there. Oh, man. I really was kind of surprised. I, I heard it a couple times this year, and you know, you have the general question. People say, "You ready for Christmas?" And I think I think I heard it twice this year, just in public, just not anybody. And you just like Walmart, and I think one I was at the scrapyard, and guy goes, "Man, I just can't wait to get it over with." And um, I, I yeah, I think that's kind of sad. Uh, there's no doubt it wears me out. And the older I get, it's uh, it's it's tiring a little bit, and uh, there is there is something to getting back to a little bit of normal seat, normal normalcy, if, if that's the case. I know Aubrey's been living with us for the next last couple of weeks. I know she's anxious to get home to her own bed, and uh, people traveling, no place like home, right? You know, um, so I, I understand all that. But, uh, and I know we're missing some folks today, so I'm, I'm set all that to say this. Uh, I'm thankful for Christmas, thankful for the holidays, and, and really enjoy it. It's been a little hectic for us this year. And uh, I'm looking forward to the upcoming year and uh, looking forward to what God has for us as a church, looking forward to getting everybody back healthy. And uh, looking forward to having seeing Christine and Keith back and getting them healthy. Jeff and Kelly getting them back. Looking forward to, I know, uh, those of us traveling in, out, um, up, down. And Addie's went back to Oklahoma for to spend a little bit of time there, kind of her own little personal vacation. And um, so uh, she, she's not sick. Somebody asked about her this morning. She's, she's just not here. But uh, so she's out. So I'm anxious to get everybody back home and uh, get get back to to business. All right. With that being said, let me just read you one verse. Have a word of prayer. Give you a little bit of backstory, and then share something with you. Isaiah chapter thirty-seven and verse three. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy for the children are come to birth and there is not strength to bring forth I want you to notice what Hezekiah says this day is a day of trouble and I understand, and I've said this over and over again, I understand this is Old Testament. I understand the context of this chapter. But I also understand that truth is truth. Doctrine is doctrine. Sin is sin. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And for Hezekiah to make the statement that this day is a day of trouble, I don't think we have to look any further than the news or at our front door, and we can also look out at this world and say that this day is a day of trouble. We are certainly living in troubled times. And uh, I want to kind of focus on that statement tonight. We're going to shift gears into 2 Corinthians here in just a minute, but let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, I need you this evening. Help me. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Cleanse me of sin. Free me of self. Give me the ability to preach boldly 
and yet lovingly tonight, Lord. Asking all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Chapters 36 and 37 is a historical piece. It's, it shifts gears from prophetic to the, if you will, then and now, at least when Isaiah wrote it. Isaiah is documenting the attack on Judah as a nation from the Assyrian army. If you have followed any of this study of Isaiah, you'll remember God's warning about and to the children of Israel in regards to looking to Egypt for protection, uh, for an ally, and not to ally with Egypt. Well, guess what Israel did? Israel allies with Egypt. In comes Assyria and is basically mocking Hezekiah the king and mocking Israel, saying that, you know, Assyria has run over and defeated anybody and everybody that they've come up against, and they were not afraid of Egypt. Uh, They're attacking Israel. Israel says, no, no, you better be careful. We got our buddies over here named Egypt, and Assyria goes, we don't care. We're going to take you out, we're going to take Egypt out, and we're going to take over the world. And I'm kind of paraphrasing what's going on here. And uh, King Hezekiah and the children of Israel say, you know, all of a sudden they get a godly moment. And uh, they kind of go, well, you know, God's on our side. And they mock God, this, this Assyrian army, this Assyrian general. And I'm paraphrasing two chapters here. You can read the two chapters, okay, and uh, get the full story. But uh, the, the idea here is, is that they say, who is your God? And Assyria even brags about their false gods. We have our gods, and look at how strong we are. So your God must not be very strong because you're a loser. I mean, this is just kind of the idea here. And uh, so Hezekiah sends messengers to Isaiah. He says, what should we do? And uh, Isaiah uh, gets, they give word back to Isaiah. As a matter of fact, if you look down in verse 10 of chapter 37... Uh, here's what Isaiah says, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Syria. Uh, and he goes on and says, Behold what the king of Syria have done to all the lands, destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered. And uh, he's kind of rebuking them, saying, Do you think that you're, you know, uh, after everything you've done, that God's going to let you out of this, that God's not going to judge you? But he goes on to say, Just know this, that Assyria will defeat itself. And we know that some angels come in, destroy the entire army, and then they believe a rumor, and they head back to their own land, and the, their army's destroyed, and, and God intervenes, okay? And so you can read all that. But for the sake of the context tonight, and for the sake of time, understand this. Israel was under attack. Under attack from a pagan nation. And in the day and time in which this is being written, they were troubled times. Israel was going through some troubles. And I would tell you this, that we're going through some troubles. And America, in and of herself, I believe, is going through some troubled times. And I like what he says here, he uh, in chapter 37 and verse 3, he says, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy. Now, I don't want to focus on those other two things, but I, I've never seen a day and age of such blasphemy, of such mocking of God, of such disrespect for morals and values and godliness. When we live in a nation that curses God as openly as it does and denounces the things of God. When we live in a nation where we have a church like this and you look around and see such empty pews, it's not not an amazing thing. In other words, it doesn't surprise me that that nation is going through troubled times. If they're not, the nation's not going to serve God, she's going to go through trouble. So having said that, The psalmist in chapter 50, verse 14, 15 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High 
and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 says, The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. I would present to you this evening that our nation in a time of trouble has only one solution. Like Israel, Israel should not have turned to Egypt for an ally. We only have one solution in a day of trouble, and that is to turn to the Lord and seek God's face. That is the answer and the solution. Let me give you a recipe for troubled times. The Apostle Paul addressed this to the church at Corinth in the book of 2 Corinthians. If you'll turn there, we'll be there for the rest of the evening. I'll move very quickly so you can see how bad the Cowboys lost today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we'll begin reading in verse 8 through the end of the chapter. Notice verse 8, we are troubled on every side. I want you to know something tonight that as a Christian... As the old song says, you were never promised a rose garden. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if you believe in me, you're going to go through some trials. They're going to hate you. If you put your, listen, the world does not like the fact that you're a Christian. I believe personally that's out of fear. I believe they're afraid of what you believe in. But I will tell you this, they don't like it. Verse 8 says we are troubled on every side. But notice this. Yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I'm going to go through five things in this text this evening. I'm going to move through them very quickly. Number one, as we've just read in verses 8 and 9, five things that we know in troubled times. Number one, we ought to know as Christians. As Christians, we ought to know that we are in God's hand and under his protection. If you don't know that tonight, boy, I got good news for you. It doesn't matter how the world flies off the rails. God's hand is still on us as Christians. Okay? He's still, even all throughout Israel, he promised Israel he said, you're going to go into bondage, you're going to, you're going to go into captivity, uh, many of you are going to be killed, but he always promises them that I will sustain the family tree of Israel. There will always be a remnant. He promised David that. There will always be a remnant, which tells me that Israel will never be destroyed. I tell you what, I have confidence every time a missile flies across the border of Israel, be careful, nobody's going to take over Israel. Nobody. All through scripture, the Bible tells me that the kings of the north one day will attack and converge on Israel. And they're not even going to make it to the border. Israel will never be taken captive by a foreign entity. How do I know that? Because God said those are his people and he'll always sustain them as a nation. And by the way, that's why God's hand of blessing is on Israel and God will bless those that back Israel. And I believe the downfall of any nation would be the downfall of America the day we ever turn our back on Israel. And I tell you, we've done so, we haven't been the best of allies in, in recent days. But notice in the first handful of verses I just read, we ought to know that we are in God's hands and under his protection. It says here in 2 Corinthians, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. That tells me two things. Number one, you're going to go through some stuff as a Christian. But no matter the stuff you go through, God still has his hand on you. If you'll just trust him. We know that his own disciples were sent. Now watch this. Sent into storms. He said, 
uh, uh, y'all get in the boat and go to the other side and I'll meet you over there. I like the fact that he told them, go to the other side. I'll meet you over there. And when Jesus says he's going to meet us over there, that means we're getting there. But they got in the boat and they went through a storm. And this probably isn't good pastoral lingo, but they freaked out. They got scared. And they thought they were going to die. And they thought they were going to sink. And out came Jesus walking on the water. Listen, uh, uh, he never said we weren't going to go through, through troubles. Matter of fact, here, we're troubled on every side. We go through it. But God, it, God's hand and protection is still on his people. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, or at least Ephesians 6, chapter 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Philippians 4, 13, you know it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. No watch. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Didn't say the devil's not going to fight us. But we're promised that in troubled times, in troubled times, God's hand of care and protection will be upon us. Let me give you the second one very quickly. Look at our text. In 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, I'm sorry, lost my place. Chapter 4, I'm sorry, chapter 4 and verse 10. Chapter 4 and verse 10. It says, always bearing, always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. It's interesting, the second thing here that we ought to know during troubled times, we ought to know that we are to serve God's purpose and that Christ ought to be seen in us. In troubled times. Now listen, in trouble, I remember when the, it was very interesting to me that when we, on 9-11, when the Twin Towers were attacked, in the last, I, I would probably say, 40, 50 years, Dad may disagree with me, he may remember another time, but I cannot remember a number of times or another time when America was under such troubled times. But I also can't remember another time when church houses weren't so full. People all of a sudden got religion. There's an old saying, I've never been in the military, you've probably heard it, Caleb, there's no atheist in a foxhole. Everybody believes in something. When there's bullets, it's funny how quickly you'll believe in God when there's bullets flying over your head. You start crying out to something. But it's interesting, in a troubled time, people, even the lost, start turning to God. When the, when the towers fell on 9-11, our little church, I mean, we just had a little, uh, I think, uh, uh, I was trying to remember, Dad, if we were, if we were down at the other building or not, but it, but I remember we, we had visitors that morning. People just walking on the street. People within walking distance, people started walking in church houses. They were afraid. But I'm going to tell you something. In troubled times, God says, Jesus Christ ought to be made manifest. Manifest means made known in our lives. There is no greater testimony in a Christian than that you let Christ shine in a troubled time. Go through a troubled time. Uh, I, I love the, I love, well, I don't say I love, but attend a funeral of a Christian. There's tears. There's sadness. But nine times out of ten, if they're truly saved, there's rejoicing. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's sad. But if they're truly saved, and if the loved ones are saved, they rejoice in the life and rejoice that they're in heaven. Boy, what a sad funeral to show up to a funeral and know that that person that died went to hell. 
not, it's not a very, very rejoicing time. But what I'm trying to say is that Christ ought to be manifested in our lives during troubled times. Romans chapter 12, verses one, uh, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. It's interesting that that has to do with the children of Israel as they're going through the wilderness, that Christ was before them. Christ represented them even during a troubled time. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Even in troubled times. Listen, we ought to be the same Christian during the good times as we are during the bad times. Or vice versa. We need to be the same person in the bad times that we are in the good times. That song says, God on the valley is God on the mountain is God on the valley. God of the good times is God of the bad. We ought to be the same Christian. Our light ought to shine. Jesus ought to be made manifest in us during troubled times. Third one, look at verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raiseth up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Uh, interesting. Uh, he, he mentions this, this idea of belief, believing. We ought to have faith during troubled times. How, how often do we see Christians when a troubled time comes? Boy, it's like they never, it's like they're not saved at all. During troubled times, we ought to have faith. We need faith, and I'm telling you, we live in troubled times. Folks, I, it doesn't matter what strain of COVID's out. Don't lose your faith. Trust God. Trust God. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, you know this, hearing by the word of God. Able to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. James 2.19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. It's interesting, the devils have more <laughs> understanding sometimes of who God is than God's own people. That ought to be a wake-up call. Luke 1, 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. 1 Corinthians 2, 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Listen, faith is a powerful thing. And in troubled times, we ought not struggle with our faith. Very quickly, rolling through this this evening. Look at verse 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 15 says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. So we, we know that, or we ought to know that we're in God's hand and under his protection. We ought to know that we're here to serve God's purpose and he is to be seen through us in troubled times. And we ought to know that we must walk in faith during troubled times. Well, we need to know this. We need to know that God is in control of those troubled times. In verse 15, for all things, like I said, now notice, for all things are for your sakes. All things. I've heard Dad teach this over and over again over the years. All, the definition of all, means all. It means everything. All things. That flat tire you're going to get tomorrow, that's all things. That thing that's going to break, all things. 
And we wonder, why, 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 how, how is this good for me? Dad, you say it builds character. I never liked that. I wanted to build character through a different way. Didn't want to go through hard times. It builds character. What dad used to say. All things, all things are for your sake. All things benefit you. You say, how? Sometimes they just say, what, what is it? If it does, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? I have learned this. And I heard I heard this somewhere, and I can't remember where I heard it. And then, and I I, I should have tried to find it. There's a verse in scripture, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's a biblical truth. Sometimes God puts us through things so that we can experience that thing, so that we know better how to help somebody else going through that same thing. It's kind of like God gives us experience. God gives us experience. It's interesting. Uh, you know, you say, well, all things work together for good. I was thinking of Brother Keith. He was a drug addict. Are you saying drugs were good for him? No, drugs were not good for him. But God delivered him from drugs. And I can tell you, Keith can deal with a drug addict a lot better than I can deal with a drug addict. You know, Brother Joe was a police officer for many years. And Brother Joe understands police officers a lot better than I understand police officers. And so on. Uh, Brother Caleb understands military a lot better than I understand military. Brother Jimmy Don understands a lawnmower way beyond more than I understand a lawnmower. Okay? Dad understands the business world more than I understand the business world. I could probably understand dogs more than y'all understand dogs. It doesn't make sense to some of y'all, but... We all go through things, and God uses all things to benefit us in different ways. For all of our sakes, he's in control, even when it doesn't seem like it is. Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Proverbs 16.9, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his his steps. Proverbs 16, 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. I don't always understand that. Why does God allow wicked and wicked people to interfere and intervene in my life? God uses that. He uses that. Even, even things that are wicked and evil. He's in control. Let me give you the last one very quickly this evening. Look at verse 16 through 18. For which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now I don't know if you understood that. But what he said is that everything that we're going through, all these troubled times that we're surrounded with, all these troubled times that are on every side, everything that we're going through, we ought to be able to endure with a smile because, folks, there's more to this life than what's going on here. We've got heaven to look forward to. We have hope. And that's what he says. He says in verse 17, for our light affliction. In other words, we, everything you're going through, you think it's so bad. Folks, compared to what we have waiting for us in heaven, this is nothing. Hey. We can handle this. This is light affliction, which is but for a moment. It worketh for us a far more an exceeding eternal weight of what? Glory. Folks, we have Jesus to look forward to. Very quickly, let me give you a couple verses here before I let you go. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Praise God for that. Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. 
2 Peter 3.13 Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for the new heavens, a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Oh, look at Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. We may not read all five verses, but if you get time, you ought to look at it. But here's what John said. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Ah, when we think about heaven, everything we're going through on this earth, folks, it just doesn't mean much at all. So, final thought this evening. Hezekiah said, this is a day of trouble. And I promise you, I, I, I hope 2022 is a better year. I hope every year is a better year. I think... I'm not sure. I think we might be in for some of the same stuff we had in 2021. But I will tell you this. We might have trouble on every side. But as Christians, as Christians, we can face it. We can face it. If we know that God's hand is on us, protecting us, if we know that we have a purpose, stay focused on that purpose, if we walk in faith, stay faithful, Understand that God is in control even when it doesn't seem like it's, it's right. And know this, that this is not our home. We're just passing through. Our final destination is heaven. Hey. And so everything that we go through, even, if, even the troubles, folks, we can go through those troubles and trials because Jesus is still on the throne and we're going to see him one day. And all God's people say, Hey,